Okay, looks like I'm here. Hi, Norm. <laughs> well, hi to everyone. I'm Norm McNaughton. You're uh, more than welcome to come visit our farm as we do a virtual tour. This is Comrie Farms. I'm the fifth generation on this land, been farming here, and I'm going to switch over this mic and cam and hopefully we can get going. Perfect. Okay. Now, as I get out here, that's our common refined store. We're going to go in here. This is what we call the milk room, where the milk gets picked up. Milk truck driver comes every other day, puts a hose through the wall that we have a spot, hooks up to the tank. But before he takes the milk, he checks it, smells it takes a sample of it and checks the temperature to make sure it's ready to be transported and go to market to one of the processors. So all that is got done before it even leaves the farm. And before it's ever got into the processing plant, that sample is tested. And if something's not right, they reject the milk. So it's our job to monitor everything and make sure the milk is ready to go. We'll now head out. Okay, sorry about that. Being tech savvy is not something I'm good at. Okay, this is our new barn. It was built in 2018. That over there, where it's darker, is our old barn. You see lots of pictures of those, you know, big old hip roof farms. But in 2018, we moved our cows into this place. This gives us the ability to uh, really manage the cows in a wonderful, wonderful way. And as I walk down here, you'll see we have a robot facility. So we milk our cows. The robot milks the cows. And that way, they are always uh, happy. Right now you have some cows up eating. The feed pusher, as we get a little closer to it, is going down and will make a run back up and feed the cows. Okay. Generally in a robot facility, you want uh, some of your cows up eating, some of your cows having a drink, and most of your cows laying down relaxing for the day. The other thing you'll notice in this barn is the sides have curtains. Right now, because of the temperature, the curtains are all the way down. So the cows have the ability to uh, breathe in the fresh air. It keeps it comfortable and keeps it very suitable for their health and well-being. Just a sec. Sorry about that. What exactly is dairy? Milk. Number one, we produce that wonderful product that covers a lot of bases and creates a healthy environment. You can see right there, the fans are up above. When the temperature gets to be about 22 degrees, half those fans start running. And then when it goes up a little higher, about 25 or 26, all the fans are running. Keeps the cows cool at all times. In the winter time, the curtains go up. The barn is pretty well closed up and we have chimneys up top. So the chimneys, we close them when it's really cold. And the coldest winter days, this barn never goes below freezing. There's enough body heat from the cows that they keep it nice and warm and good enough for them and they're healthy and they've never done better. I always say when we built the new barn, if we had to uh, maybe talk to the cows and they could talk back, they'd tell us how much they enjoy this environment. This here is our special needs pen. And the special needs pen is really good today because there's no cows needing special needs. How do you clean the milk the cows give? Well, follow me here. We are gonna go down into the robot room. 
I had to stop and put my glasses on. So right now, this is our Gia robot that is milking a cow. So what it does when it attaches that, and hopefully we'll get another cow to come in, the laser and the camera sees the teats and attaches. For the first few minutes, it washes the teat and cleans it. When I look at my screen here, that is what is going on in my screen. This is cow number 587. Her name is Urugger. Funny name, I know. But anyway, presently right now, her teat is being cleaned and scrubbed a little bit with fresh water. And then that gets flushed away. And the first little bit of milk goes with it. If you can hear that new, that's a pulsation noise now. Stops and goes, stops and goes, stops and goes. What that does, that allows the unit to give the teeth a slight squeeze and then release. And when it releases, the milk flows. So the milk starts flowing. How do I know the milk is flowing? I look at my screen. My screen tells me at the top that the last time this cow was here, she gave 10 kilograms. Right now, she's, whoop, she's up to 2.7. 25% of what she gave the last time she arrived. So she gets to come to this whenever she wants, but she only gets milked up to three or four times a day. How many cows do we have? We have 50 cows here. One robot will handle 50, 55 cows. I'll maybe turn a little bit. This is all the dynamics of the robot. As you can see, the cow standing in there. There's another cow that she's just looking for any feed that might get spilt. We have a little bit of an issue. They're always looking around for more, but you can see, maybe you can see the nose of the cow there. Yep. And so she's eating. This is what brings the cow to the robot. There's some nice pellet in there. You could say it was like candy. And they come in there to eat that. We have cows when they first calve, will milk up to 60 kilograms a day. So they will be getting milk four times a day. That way, there's less stress on them, and they get to carry the milk, and it doesn't create the stress on the udder where two times a day does create more stress. You look out there, see the cows laying down? We have what they call a groove floor. You see the marks in the cement? That helps with their traction. So when they're walking, there's less chance of them slipping. Our cows do have the ability to go outside. We, uh, we open the gates up partway through the morning, uh, they don't go out. They like the barn too much, but they will go out at nights when the sun's down and wander around a little bit. And generally, they they come back in. Keep that tail out of the way. Let's see how she's doing. Okay. Presently, what she got? 86%. So the last time she was here, she gave 10.4. This time, she's gave 10 kilograms. Not too bad. When we look over on this side, this means the two teats on the right side of her udder are no longer milking. They're done. And the two teats on the left still are. There. You can see that. And before this teat cup comes off, it leaves iodine right there. That iodine helps the teat stay disinfected and clean. Okay. The front one just come off. We'll wait for a minute. And this other one will come off. And then those teats will all be sprayed with iodine. So this one unit attaches everything, cleans the teat, prepares it to be milking, stimulates the udder. So you have to give them a little bit of, a little rub to get them going kind of in a nice way. And then when it's done, it sanitizes and puts iodine on there. Now the unit is done. It's going back to its home base. All right. The door will open and out will go the cow. How long does it take? That cow was five minutes and 42 seconds. Oh, how long does it take the milk to get to market? The milk leaves here every other day. I think they get it out very shortly, within two to three days. It depends on the product. If they're making cheese, that's gonna take a lot longer because you have to make the cheese. Fluid fresh milk would go pretty quick. Okay, who's here now? 548, Sherry. Sherry is our favorite cow because she comes to the robot all the time and gives about uh, 50, 55 liters of milk. Whoop. 
that flush of air is the milking unit being dried slightly. After it cleans itself, between each, ca each cow, it cleans itself. Let's watch it attach. Left rear's on. Right rear's on. How the milk's turned into butter, that's a long thing. It takes a lot of churning to make milk into butter. And it goes through a churning machine and, uh, and takes quite a bit of time. The processors do that. We don't personally make that. We just sell the milk right now to go to the processors. In the future, we're looking at making some of our own butter on, on the farm. My son will be involved, and he'll be able to answer those types of questions. But, uh, okay, there we go. So right now, we're in that stimulation phase. So it's washing and cleaning those teats and making sure there's no, like the, our cows are on sand. It's a sand bed, so it washes that sand away. And then what it does, it dumps that down the drain and cleans it. But you can hear the pulsation is very fast. That means it's cleaning. And at the same time, the cow is being fed. Now, as you hear that pulsation slow down, now she will start milking. And we'll go back to the screen and we can see 548. All the dots are blue. She's attached. LMS is large, medium, or small. She's a large cow, so it's set so she can fit in there quite nicely. No milk coming yet. Just give it a minute. These are our control units. When I touch this, you can see the feed amount. You see how she's got 1.2 of what she gets to feed. If I hit the plus button, there, I just gave her a little bit of that feed. That's a treat. They really like that. It's because she showed up to see let you people watch her be milked, I gave her a treat. Let's take that away. Where are we at? The last time she was here, she had 10 kilograms, and she has already produced one kilogram of the milk. Everything's working good. When I push this button, it shows us all the data we get on there each quarter. Okay, a cow has four quarters, four teats. Tells me the conductivity, the sensitivity. If anything is not right, we are notified on our phones and on the computer here. The temperature of the milk coming out of the cow, 36 degrees on all four quarters. One is 37. It'll tell us how much each quarter gives so we can analyze all that data. Oh, we're now up to 3.2, 3.3. I got to keep my glasses on. See the green light flashing? Green is all good. That means things are working tickety boo. I'm not sure which cow this is, but she wants in. Number 570. Oh, that's Martha. Martha thinks it's time to come, but she has to wait. We can only have one cow in here being milked at a time, so that's why one robot looks after 50 to 55 cows. If you have too many cows, they don't get enough time to go to the robot. Well, now just settle down, girl. No, all dairy cows can produce the milk and produce the butter. We have only Holsteins at this farm. There are five different dairy breeds. The next popular after Holsteins are the Jerseys, the little brown cows that are so cute. They have a higher butterfat contact content and, uh, and produce a little bit more protein. Settle down, girl. She probably doesn't like me talking. She's usually in here alone. The Holstein that we have is the largest breed of the dairy breeds. They will, uh, well, they'll become, oh boy, I don't know my centimeters, but they'll get to be, you know, up five feet tall. They'll weigh a ton when they're full age, if they're big enough. And so they consume a lot a day. We go through, uh, each cow will drink a bathtub full of water and eat 50 kilograms. There we have two teats done at the same time. Both front teats are done. They're just sucking, and both of them have iodine sitting on them, so the, every machine is working perfect. One of our jobs on the farm is to maintain the robot. Every morning we clean it up. There's a camera on it that looks, so we make sure we watch the camera. 
Shannon wonders, do cows sleep at night? Do they sleep standing up or lying down? Well, I'm not so sure they sleep standing up, but they rest. Our cows, they get milked all day long, 24 hours. Okay? Robot's going away. The cow will leave. I will go back out to the barn. So what the cows will do is lay in the sand and lay their head back. And what I've found since we've built the new barn is they sleep even more. The sand is incredibly comfortable. It's relaxing for them. And so they have the ability to uh, lay there in a comfortable bed that they make up themselves. That there is number 586, and she's waiting to go to the robot. Now, as I step down here, the light's a little bad, but there you can see it's our, you can call it the rumba, but it's called the feed pusher. And it's just going back. It's just gone along and pushed all the feed up to the cows. And what you'll find is some of the cows will get up and go when it goes. It will go back to its station here in a minute. Right there, that's the power station where it goes in and charges up to go again. They put little magnets in the cement floor, and that's how it follows its track. Does this milking process hurt the cows? No, it doesn't. What hurts the cows is when they start to get full of milk and they get uncomfortable. So that's why they go. The stimulation is quite gentle. It, uh, it's just a little slight squeeze and then a release. And when they release, the milk comes down. It's no different than if we were going to milk a cow by hand when you would squeeze the teat and let it go. So it does not hurt them whatsoever. They quite, they, it does take a day or two for them to get used to the process when they first calve as young two-year-olds. But once they settle in, they really enjoy it. And that cow that was milked, Sherry, she tends to go too much. So never worry about that. Cows, when they're doing what this cow's doing right now, chewing her cud and eating a bunch of feed, they're happy. We feed them twice a day. Does a cow only start being milked after having a calf? That is correct. We have uh, 50 milk cows. We have 50, 55 heifers here. And the heifers get bred. And when they calve for the first time around two years of age, that's when they start milking. I'm going to show you a cow that's sleeping right now. If we could just see where she's got her head back. So here it is, 10 to 11 in the morning, and she's sleeping. But that means probably at 2 o'clock this morning, she was up getting milk because she can do it whenever she wants. But she's found her time. But that's the beauty. That cow is nice and comfortable. It's like a little single bed for each cow. This is one of our nosy ones that just has to come and say hi every time we're in the barn. Okay. Does the advantage of sand versus straw for bedding? The big advantage with sand is they call it it's inert. Nothing lives in the sand. So since we've moved our cows and put them on sand, we have never produced more quality milk. We stay well within limits of where we need to be. It's just wonderful because nothing lives in the sand. Nothing grows in the sand, no bacteria. Where when we had the cows on straw, we had to continually change the straw every day, watch them closely and make sure we kept it clean because bacteria will live in the straw. So that's one of the advantages of this barn. The sand can be hard on equipment, which is a little more technical, but it is great for cows. And that's the most important thing. But I like to tell people those really hot, sticky days that, you know, they cooked over 30, they come here. And they lay down in their sand and the breeze is blowing and the fans on them. And they're having a better day than I am when I'm sweating it out. But we actually like to enjoy being in the barn with the cows. It's cooler, feels good. And those cows basically have gone to the beach because they're laying on the sand. How much is the cost of a robot? Well, 250000 to get a robot installed and put everything in. Um, you could put a second one in for about half that. And that, it'll vary a little bit, but it, right around that number, seems it is a lot of money. Tractors cost more when we look at that. But our feeling is that robot works 24-7 all the time. Um, it's down. We uh, In the mornings, we spend time doing some maintenance for 10 or 15 minutes. They come in every so many milkings and do some maintenance. So it stops for a little bit. And they'll work on it. We have to maintain it. But uh, it's an incredible machine. And how it works is it's hooked up to our phones. 
So the other night, for the first time in months, at 3 o'clock in the morning, I got an alarm. So I came out, and the one door just wouldn't shut. It got stuck, the exit door. So I had to give it a little push, and then it shut. And so who knows? we got to look at that the next day and make sure everything's working. But uh, it lets us know if something's not right. So we make sure one of the family members is never too far away. But these cows, we used to milk every morning at 5.30 and every night at 5 o'clock. We now have a lifestyle that at five o'clock in the afternoon, we could go somewhere. The difference is when we come back, we have to make sure we come to the barn to check on things. We prepare the feed for the cows, put it out here. The pusher keeps it up to them. What we like about the pusher is the cows don't have to reach for the feed. So it's very easy for them. Okay. teeth clean and cavity free about two years of age or two to three years age age they will lose their original teeth so you'll find them the odd time they are constantly eating and uh so that keeps their their teeth clean they don't have a lot of teeth issues we've never had much trouble horses will have some we don't have much so they that is not a big um issue for us our big thing is to make sure they have a well-balanced diet it's no different than when you get told you have to eat a nutritious, well-balanced diet. We sample all our feeds. Uh, you won't be able to see if I do that. You can see the green grass in the background. That's alfalfa that we grow for the cows. So we sample that. We sample our corn stalks, and we figure out what the cows need, and we balance with minerals to make sure they have enough calcium in their diet, enough nitrogen or enough uh, phosphorus and everything. So then all the levels – are there so they can produce milk and stay healthy. Is there a doctor that gives the cows a checkup? Yes, there is. Only the doctor's called a veterinarian. Our veterinarian comes every two weeks and checks to make sure cows are pregnant if we have any issues. Um, since we've moved to the new barn, our health issues have almost disappeared because the air is fresh, the cows are healthier, and the environment is very suitable for the cows. But the veterinarian comes mostly for reproduction work to make sure they're healthy and, you know, and, and ready to be bred again to have another calf. Cow's gestation is they go, they're like a human. They carry the calf for nine months. They have a dry period for two months. That's when we put them back in the old barn. The old barn has like eight cows in there and it used to hold 50. So those eight cows are pretty happy. They lay on straw in there, but the straw is wonderful for the calf to be born in. So that's where we have all that get done. But the veterinarian comes in every two weeks. And if we have veterinarians on call 24-7, if we have a sick cow in the middle of the night for some reason, um, they will come. The other thing that's really neat that I forgot to talk about, these cows, the collars they have on have a little green transponder underneath. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, come on, girl, move your head. Oh, they want to look at me. But anyway, this little green transponder actually tells us if the cows stop eating it monitors it what it's also what the robot reads so when a cow goes in it identifies the cow says she hasn't been here for five or six hours so we can milk her and it identifies how much to feed her but the thing for us is when we go in in the morning we look at that data i'll see if i can bring this one up see her transponder right there okay we look at the data it will flash and say this cow's not eating her stomach's not moving so it helps us maintain healthy cows. The sooner you get on a cow that's sick, the better. Over there, you can see a cow having a drink. Well, she's not drinking right now. There she goes. She's going to have a drink. That's what we call a tip trough. So every few days, we tip all the water out of there, clean it up. And so that way, they're always getting fresh water. The other thing that's of some interest, if you notice this, I'll bring it up. That is our brush, and it's a cow brush. And we haven't got a cow using it right now, but when they use it, boy, they really just love that scrubbing and that brush. That gets their, just makes them feel good. How many animals do you have on the farm? We have about 100 to 110 animals. So 50 to 55 milk cows and 50 to 55 heifers that'll be replacements that grow up to be milk cows. Questions have been wonderful. Will the animals or the cows be bored? No, they're not. They're creatures of habit. One thing they are, 
is they love to be amongst the others. They're a herd. That's why they always use the term herd. So as long as everybody's here and they like to be bored, that's happy for them. If something like a lightning storm hits or something strange happens, they get excited and then they could hurt themselves. They could jump or, you know, slip or whatever. They like a nice, cool, calm existence. And that's why these barns worked out so wonderful for us because they're comfortable. And as long as they're doing what that cow's doing right there, chewing their cud, they're happy. That's a good, I missed that. Do you empty the entire barn to do a full cleaning of the barn? No. What happens here is the cows, we have big scrapers. So the scrapers clean the barn and they bring it down right uh, down here. I'll try to walk a little slower. And the manure goes out to a big tank where it's stored. So as we go by, that's our walk space. And this is where the manure gets scraped down. So what we do every two weeks, we put more sand in the stalls. We keep the sand there to keep them bedded. Let's go over here. I'll show you. This is going to be looking at poop, but poop comes with the farm. See there, the scraper came down and brought the poop down. And right behind the scraper, nice clean floor. Those things work incredible. They're working all day long. And what we do at morning and night, we go out and we... Uh, Take a rake and pull manure that happens to be in the sand and just pull it back and get it in the scraper. And there's a great big tank out back. It's a big, looks like a big swimming pool, but it definitely isn't because it's full of manure. And we will have people come in and they'll stir that up and apply it to the land. And that is a fertilizer, which helps us grow our crops and makes a wonderful cycle. It's almost, well, we make it like sustainability. So what comes out of the what goes into the cow comes out of the cow goes back on the land to grow the crops to go back into the cow. Then she wonders why the cow's tails have that brush type thing at the end of their tails. <laughs> well, it's just the way their tails get kind of curled up a little bit. We think it's really important to keep you know the tails long. We don't you know some people will cut the tail a little bit shorter so it you know it doesn't get into stuff it shouldn't we let them lay as long as they are but they always curl up like that but they use the tail if there's any flies we don't uh in the new barn again i always come back to the new barn because of the airflow and the fans going we have very few flies so they really don't need them but to me a cow has to have a tail how many robot milkers are there in ontario um, I would say it, every new, every new barn that gets built, probably more than half, more than 50% of new barns are putting robots in. They work tremendously well in a new environment and a new barn because you need a flow. As you can see here, if I spread it up a little bit, the cows are able to have room to go to the robot and leave. And so it is a trend that's going to the future. And a lot of it gets down to labor. We have to manage data and manage our farm, where before we used to have to do a lot more work physically getting in with the cows. The other new barns will have parlors where they'll have a big spot at the end. The cows go in and get milked. And uh, so those, but the robots, I don't know what the percentage is, but it grows every year in Canada. And the other thing is because they work and they work well and the cows love them. And as I say, Cow people, that's what we call people that really like being around cows, like robots, because if it's milking the cow, they have time to do all the other things. And the pusher, you can hear that beeping? That means the pusher's starting out to push feed again. It's only beeping so it doesn't bump into me without me knowing. Is the scraper a robot too? Um, not yet, yeah, maybe yes and no. It is on a timer on a big long cable that goes around. So every so often it starts and stops. So it is like a robot. It's very, uh, it's the easy robot to fix, I guess I would say, but, but that scrapes the manure down and it goes really, really slow. So the cows, they know it's coming and they just lift their feet and watch it go. And so it works very handily. It avoids the fact that we would have to bring a machine in. And once you bring a machine in, the cows get a little more scared and they get uneasy. So when it goes back to that question, boredom is good for cows. 
I'm trying to think what else I can talk about. But anyway, questions. What's your favorite thing about being a dairy farmer? I get to work all the time. No, <laughs> um, I, I, I love the cows. I, uh, I, it's hard to explain. It's just uh, my passion to look after them. To me, each one of them is an Olympic athlete, and I need to help that cow maintain itself and, and do what it can to provide wonderful milk for the public. I mean, we, uh, there's nothing like milk. It's so nutritious. All the things it covers, the bases, it's healthy. You know, the thing that I get a big chuckle about is everybody worries about whether they have 2% milk or 4% milk, which basically is 96% fat-free or 98% fat-free, which really isn't a big difference. I personally drink 4% milk because I love the full fat. That's a full fat. 4% out of 100 is the full fat taste, and I love that taste. And that uh, it's being able to provide for people like you is a very comforting feeling. It's, it's a real challenge at times, but uh, we try to do the best. And I guess the biggest thing is I, I have to be busy anyway. So Okay. So it looks like we're starting to wind up and call it a day. I, uh, Appreciate your time. I mean, if you people don't log in, we've got nobody to talk to. So as I always say, I am who I am. We do what we do, but we care a lot. And I like people to know that, that we don't, uh, we try to think like a cow and, and do what's best for the cow. So you all enjoy your day and uh, we'll carry on and look for better weather. It's a little dreary today. Thank you.